is the place we call our Hall of Wonders. Really quite a place. This is filled with things that people have wondered about. Let me show you some of them. For example, uh, one day a fellow struck a couple of stones together and he got some sparks and he wondered if there wasn't some use for those sparks. And there was. Fire. Here's a fellow who wondered if there wasn't an easier way to push that big heavy log along the ground. So he put some small logs underneath it. He found a way. Now we call it the wheel. Here's a very famous wanderer over here, Mr. C. Columbus, a gentleman who wondered what was over the horizon, and the man who went and looked and found the world's greatest and most beautiful real estate developer. Then the American pioneers, they were wanderers too. They kept wondering what was over this mountain range and the next mountain range. In fact, we Americans have been wanderers since our very first days. We've not only wondered, dreamed about things and dared to do something about those dreams. We've made those dreams work. Alexander Graham Bell here. He wondered if he could send a voice through a wire. Tom Edison wondered. He wondered if he could uh, perhaps light the world through a wire. And the Wright brothers wondered. Wondered if man could fly. And here are a couple of uh, wonderful people. They're wonderful because they inspired those others. And they're real people. And you ought to know them. In fact, if you don't know them, you're not in business. Because that's the American consumer family. Business is wondering what Mr. and Mrs. America want. And then seeing that they get it. Had kept inventors and engineers busy wondering since the earliest days. Someone wondered if there wasn't a better, more convenient way. And there is. Wonder if we can find an easier way to do that. We can. We Americans have wanted things that we've only dreamed about. And things that we've never even dreamed about have often been given to us. For example, we're the most moving about people on the earth. We've never lost our interest in better transportation. Yet it took a dreamer to think of getting rid of the horse. Into the automobile have gone more engineering, more designing, more know-how than any other product in history. Yet it took dreamers, I dreamer, to do this job, starting way back. Let me show you one of the ideas that a dreamer had for the car. To keep from scaring other horses, he put that on the front. <laughs> he really did. Oh, and then there was uh, this delight, the hand crank, you remember? This kept engineers happy for years, trying to figure out some way to get rid of it. They tried clockwork and compressed air and rubber bands and gunpowder and whatnot, but they didn't succeed until one day, many years ago, when an early General Motors Research Laboratory engineer named Charles Kettering, who was a very practical man, decided to try one of his inventions, which he called the electric starter. Well, of course, now we use the little key instead of the big old hand crank. Through the years, it's, it's been like that. People saying, uh, why can't we fix this so people will like it better? And someone else saying, well, let's try. The closed body gave the uh, why can't we dreamers and the Let's try, engineers, some problems. Problems which couldn't possibly be solved. So, they solved them anyway, and made automotive history. What started with uh, trying to get in out of the rain has kept three generations of engineers mighty busy. This seems to prove that there's more than one way to solve every problem. And two, it proves that dreamers are never satisfied. You know what this is? It's one of those old floor-mounted gear shift levers. And once a lot of people wondered if we couldn't get along without these. Some were researchers looking for things that had never been thought of before. And their slogan was, I wonder if we can. Design engineers developing new ways of making things better said, well, let's try. 
and production engineers, seeing to it that new products could be manufactured economically. They said, sure, we can make it, but we have a few improvements. Still others were testing engineers, making sure that the new products are safe and dependable and durable. And many, many times they said, it works, but we can make it better. This just because someone wondered what it'd be like to drive without having to shift gears. And along with the new idea in automatic transmission came new ideas for engines, engines with more power and more economy. Suppose I'd been sitting in a car like this several years ago and uh, I'd said to you, gee, wouldn't it be swell if steering were real easy like this, especially when you're standing still? Well, you would have said to me, we're already working on that. And so we have been for a long time. We make a few thousand drawings and blueprints. We build and test well, maybe a hundred experimental models. Then if we and the practical designers and the hard-headed production men and the skeptical testers have done our jobs right, well then the factory men can turn yesterday's dream of effortless power steering into today's reality. <laughs> now that looked easy, didn't it? And I'm not a bit tired. I want you to see an exhibit now of early American art, one that I whipped up uh, back in the fourth grade. This is the Garraway Dream Car, a real super-duper Mac Rooney special. I was mighty proud of this, I remember. Of course, I didn't have much to go by about this time. I remember Dad had just traded in the family car, which looked like this for a brand new beauty. Every few years, the family pride and joy would get traded in on a new model. And you can see for yourself how more than 40 years have changed her. Advanced styling has always been the result of designers dreaming a little ahead of the public's desires and engineers making those dreams practical as soon as the public was ready for them. And even while Mr. and Mrs. America are enjoying today's family car with all its comfort and performance and safety and economy, the designers and the builders and the testers are already at work to make it better for tomorrow. Well, there's been a lot of change for the better in this department, too. I remember my mother used to say there's a little of the boy in every man and a little of the tomboy in every girl. I think she was right. I think that explains the way we feel about sports cars these days. Well, here's about the happiest automobile I've ever seen. The men who designed this had fun. And the builders and the testers had fun. And while it's never going to take the place of the family car, I, for one, am going to have a lot of fun owning it. Now, this could never have happened unless the world's largest manufacturer of automobiles had put its tremendous resources back of the job of designing and building a sports car to uphold American leadership in every field of transportation. They built her to handle like an angel, with every ounce of weight right where it belongs for perfect balance, clean and sleek and efficient looking, and light and strong. And they kept the cockpit simple and practical. For the power plant, they started with the finest valve and head engine. Some extra special features of higher compression, triple side draft carburetors, and dual exhaust give her 160 horsepower. Naturally, the automatic transmission quadrant's on the floor. That's in keeping with sports car tradition. In addition to the speedometer, there's a tachometer to measure engine revolutions. They call her Corvette, and she belongs to the highway just for the sheer and simple joy of driving for the open road and the country byway for Mr. and Mrs. America in a carefree mood. Boy, what a car. 